Hi everyone, Sandra Alexa here, May 1st, and we're going to have a little bit of a Cosmo weather forecast. See what the gold nuggets are going to be, what's happening for us in May, and there's lots. Uh, so every week I'll, I'll, have a, um, I'll have a video, sometimes two, and I would appreciate it if you feel that you would like to subscribe, and if you could hit like, and if you could share, okay? And I want to welcome everybody. Um, I have a lot of new friends. I have a lot of older friends, but we're all here together and we just share information. This is one of my gifts, okay? You can uh, look at my website, uh, www.mypersonalmuse.com. I do astrology and numerology and I'm a spiritual coach. And then this book is called Game Changer and it's about self discovery. And basically, that's what we're doing is going through a real process of self-discovery as we are in what we call lockdown. But things are starting to open up, the sun is shining, it's getting warm, so it's nice. Wow, so we have this huge astronomical event on May the 5th, okay? And it'll go until January the 18th of 2022. So it's one of the most important transits for this year. And it's the nodes of the moon switch signs. So the North Node, now, for those of you that don't understand what the node means, all you need to know is about what they do, but people that are into the astrology like that. So the North Node moves into Gemini, which leaves the South Node moving into Sagittarius. And as I said, one of the most important transits of the year. The last time we had this was in 2001. So there's usually 18.6 years between them. And the lunar node switching from the north node, which is was in Cancer, or which is going to be was in Cancer, and the south node was in Capricorn, it's going to give us a lighter energy. It's not going to be as intense because we've had a lot of intense energy because it's all about transformation. It's about waking up, um, aligning with the divine, transforming, and just really seeing what's going on in the world. Okay. So the last time it changed, okay, um, signs was after 9-11, and now this change is right after the corona pandemic, which is interesting. Now, the nodes are associated with our past lives, with our karma, with our dharma, with our destiny, okay? And so I just, my last um, video that's up is on karmic relationships, so you might want to look at that after you listen to this. The South Node is connected to past lives and past karma, and it represents any unresolved karma, which we need to sort out in this lifetime, okay? The South Node represents all unfinished business. Chances that you have not taken, dues you have not paid, and things you haven't caught, quite brought to fruition. And the nodal work is all about what are your gifts? What are your skills? What is your purpose? There's all kinds of things, okay? And so the North Node is all about the future. It's like the North Star. What's the future karma? And we have the opportunity to actually change that karma, okay? To become more conscious, more aware, and rewrite the script of your destiny. 2020 is not only the beginning of a new decade, okay? But an astrological era and this access, okay, takes us, takes the raw experiences of our life and puts them in a crucible that produces either wisdom or bitterness. And that comes from Elizabeth Spring. I just love that quote. The North Node in Gemini points toward new choices, growth, ambitious desires, and absorption of new material. In contrast, the South Node exposes the old, it's in Sagittarius, the old, the familiar issues in need of digesting, decomposing, harvesting, and releasing. The Gemini path is which we will need to embrace in changes of direction. So it's about letting go of the old. So again, I hope I said it right, the South Node's in Sag, the North Node's in Gemini. Now, so... You're, you're looking to the future, so you're going to have some changes. You need to value curiosity and be willing to question dogmatic points of view okay, and integrate new perspectives. Once the South Node enters 
this Sag during May, the planet Jupiter actually offers counsel on how to resolve and wisely draw from our beliefs in the way we find meaning in life. While Jupiter signifies expansion, since it will be ruling the south node of the moon, it will need, we need to examine our underlying philosophy of life in order to shed the aspects that are no longer aligned with our experience, outmoded, decay, and disintegration, but also seed-like, so you're going to rechannel, okay, into creative expression. And that'll be a really good, because what's happened is you've really been in lockdown, having to really look more within, um, contemplate more, um, it hasn't been that easy for a lot of people. There's been a lot of challenges, but it's a time of self-discovery. The evolution of the human being from a third-dimensional carbon base to an energetic diamond-based being as some of the labor pains that we're going through moving into the fifth dimension. Hey? Okay, There's nothing easy about it. And so in the transits in 2020, the best we can know, we can know what to expect is like a map. So we want to keep checking the planetary weather. This is one of the keys. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Einstein said that insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So the south node is the familiar, it's a comfort zone. What you intuitively know from previous lifetimes or genetic memory what you are designed to keep doing because it feels safe and nature. But the gold is in the shadow. It is in our personal south node. However, you need to travel to the north node. So you need to let go of a lot of stuff and move up, be curious, see what's happening. Okay. But we also have, which I will be talking about because this is in Gemini, we also have a Venus in Gemini and it's going retrograde. So that's going to put a big thing on relationships for you. So we need to learn to embrace this Gemini energy and let go and integrate the Sagittarius, okay? The Gemini Sag axis is about the axis of the mind, learning how to balance the lower mind with the higher mind, okay? And so if Sag says you find everything you need to know in religion or history books, Gemini, like Buddha, encourages you to doubt everything and find your own light, contemplate it, have inquiry, okay? So understand the term discernment. Connecting and aligning to the divine, trust your intuition, and practice discernment, and, and be the observer and be the witness, because Mercury, which rules Gemini, can be the trickster, okay? And it's all about knowledge, Okay, so education, religion, customs, lifestyle, that type of thing. Okay, and these lunar nodes are going to be bring eclipses, so we'll have lots of eclipses in July, which we will be talking about um, later. So I also have some dates. I'm going to be put, putting up a written document so you can look at the dates because there's different events. And so consequences the familiar, the comfortable, and the past, it's going to be revealed. And so you're going to see some things. The impact of these nodes is one of the most mysterious and mesmerizing, meaningful aspects of astrology. It's just like things come out of kind of left field, how you meet people, how you're brought into different possibilities and opportunities. And it's like, wow, okay. So we all have specific nodes in our personal chart and then collectively every 18 months. So this would be a really great time for you to have a personal uh, session or reading right now. As we have finished off one, the tests we face in 2020 are there for you to turn within and gain some called self-mastery, self-discovery, because you're being asked or pushed to become a self-sufficient functioning energy being that contributes to society. So no energy vampires. It's all about maturity. So put your big girl and your big boy pants on. No victims as you're responsible for creating your own lives. 
since Jupiter will be residing in Capricorn for most of 2020 with Pluto, we need to regenerate our vision of life, digging deep underneath the surface of issues dealing with any difficulties. Uh, so, and we're moving from an Earth-based dense, density. That's another big thing. So it's a lot of permanence. So we're moving into something that's more flexible. There's more impermanence, faster ideas, that type of thing. Anybody that has studied any of the, the Buddhist philosophy, it's about impermanence. You might want to look that up. So online businesses will do good. Um, so it's really fascinating because we're also connecting with the Aquarian energy themes and we're glimpsing them. So it's a bigger truth. One of the things is it is about truth and Sagittarius seeks the truth. Where, Nep where Gemini seeks information, we do have a little bit of a challenge with Neptune. So you need to be careful. It can be a bit, a bit of an illusion, a bit of a delusion. But that's part of your transformation and your learning. And it's triggering um, your journey. So there can be challenges with truth and deception, corruption and greed, okay, because of still the Pluto and Capricorn. And that will move out in 2023. But December 20th of 2020, we have some big shifts coming. So as Carolyn Mai says, watch the modern day spellcasters. We have lots of choices for the next few years, being aware and conscious of what's going on. So I hope that has given you some information. You can put a little comment in the bottom and I can comment to you or you uh, can comment. And um, I wish you much love, many blessings, and I hope you would share uh, this and um, just embrace it and enjoy May. Things are going to start opening up and there's only two emotions, one love and one fear, okay? And find the love and find the trust in the divine, okay, through aligning with spirit. And thank you so much for your time.